Hey ladies, today is Saturday, November 6, 2021. And um, last video that I did, I was in labor um, unexpectedly due to preeclampsia. Preeclampsia, I've heard it pronounced different ways, whatever. Um, and unfortunately, had elevated liver levels, um, liver enzyme levels were elevated significantly, which is something that happens in preeclampsia or could happen in preeclampsia, preeclampsia. And um, had to unexpectedly deliver my baby at 32 weeks and three days gestational period. So wasn't due until December 28th. I was already expected to be induced um, at 38 weeks pregnant, which is roughly two weeks, you know, middle of December. And here we are where he is um, an early November baby. So he's way early. So unfortunately, um, that means he has to be in the NICU, but, oh, and it is a boy, since I don't find out genders before birth. <laughs> this one was a boy, and his name is Elijah, and he is four pounds, four ounces, which is good for his um, gestational age of being 32 weeks, and um, he was 19 inches long. And he was very, has a very strong cry. <laughs> he was breathing on his own. So he was very strong. So that was all really, really great. I mean, it doesn't take away from the fact that the reality is he should still be in the womb, which is where he's supposed to be. But he's not. He's out here in, in this world, you know, and unfortunately he's in an incubator. And um, I'm still in the hospital. And, um... You know, my last video, I was just all over the place. So just to catch you up. Um, so I ended up getting induced. I was induced on, gosh, the days have just been going by. They put me on magnesium to make sure that I didn't have a stroke or seizure due to the elevated levels and then preeclampsia. Um... And my blood pressure actually was good, which was weird, but, you know, blood pressures can go up and down. You can still have preeclampsia, so that has apparently nothing to do with it. I mean, it can show it, but it's just one sign, so there's a lot of things that they put together. It's not just one thing that gives you preeclampsia, so it's, it, and there's also a lot they don't know about it, so, and they told me that as well. But um, I was completely unprepared. I didn't have anything packed. I went to a regular routine doctor's visit and ended up turning that into my hospital stay. <laughs> like now I'm in my little hospital room. This is actually a nice one though. And um, a lot of times women, when they want to pack their, what I'm going to bring to the hospital bag, they pack a robe or they buy a robe. So um, the hospital... And I went to this hospital two years ago when I had my daughter and they didn't do this. But now they have this little, when you're giving birth, you're in the like traditional hospital robe with all the snaps and all that. But once you get moved to postpartum, you get to get one of these, you know, more satiny robes, which opens in the front and doesn't have all the snaps. You know, it's it's more like a regular robe. And then they have a a... a a quilted robe that you can even wear on top of that. So that's definitely an improvement from last time I was here. Um, but that was two years ago. And so that's that's a change. Um, but yeah, I didn't have any any of the stuff that you would have in your, I'm packing my bag to go to the hospital. So um, only thing I did have, I think God I had, um, was my charger. So I have that for my cell phone and um, for my earbuds since I've been using them. And um, I have my glasses because I generally will go back and forth between contacts. So I got my glasses and my contact case. So that was it. I didn't have anything else, not deodorant, which 
they don't give you in this hospital. I did have um, some some of the little like instant oils that have that little scent to it. So I'll put them, you know, I don't have deodorant. Um, but yeah, I haven't really been thinking about that because it's been a really whirlwind of a situation. And I, um, like I said, I was induced on, I got in here on Wednesday. I guess I was induced Thursday. What's so today's Saturday. So I was induced on Thursday night. And they thought that um, they were trying to originally hope that I could just stay in the hospital under observation and not get induced for a while so we can get the baby longer term. Unfortunately, that didn't happen because my liver levels were not allowing that and were progressively elevating and getting worse. And so, of course, that will ultim ultimately eventually make me worse, which makes baby worse. So the best thing that they thought to do, and they, I mean, I'm not a doctor. The best thing to do was to induce, try to get him out. Um, and so I was induced around, I guess, around 6 p.m. on Thursday. And they were telling me he would probably be possibly born by midnight or around midnight on Friday. He wasn't. He wasn't born until 12.53. 12, not 12.53, 12.47. Mm. 12.47 yesterday in the afternoon. So 12.47. Um, so from Thursday at 6, around 6 p.m. when I start, started to get induced until 12.47 um, the next day when he was born. I did only push once. Um, he was a vaginal delivery. Oh, and I literally only pushed once. And that was pretty amazing. Um, probably the best part of the story <laughs> is that I only had to push once. Everything else is kind of like, eh, you know, it was uh, it was scary. It was scary as hell. Um, liver levels just kept going up. And they, every time they just gave me worse news, then they were telling me they were going to do a C-section because, you know, he wasn't, if, if, if we couldn't get the baby moving, you know, the baby just didn't move. But ultimately my nurse, um, and thank God for her, she, she bought some sort of peanut thing. It looked basically like a big inflated peanut. You know how sometimes women sit on those big, um, birthing balls, but those are women who can get out of bed. But when you, you know, I was on magnesium at an epidural, like you're not at that point, you can't really get out. Um, and, but I was still able to use this peanut and it's for women who are still in bed. So that still helps to help. Like you kind of just, it's just, they situated between your legs and it helps to open up, I guess your cervix or whatever. And so he was able to come down pretty quickly after I used the peanut. I really do think that helped a lot to bring him down and help me avoid a C-section because I was able to deliver him vaginally and I was so happy about that. So that's another good thing. So vaginally, and when I knew, once he got down and I knew he was down, I literally only had to push once and he came out. Now, part of that is because he's my second baby, which apparently are easier. The other part is because he's preemie, so he's smaller and being four pounds, but you know, um, but yeah, so here I am in the hospital. My liver levels, now that he has been born, are starting to go down. They're not going down as quickly as they went up, but they are going down. Um, not sure when I'll be out of here. Could be tomorrow, maybe not. My blood pressures have been good. Um, but honestly, I'm a little nervous to leave. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I had my two-year-old at home. This was all very sudden. It was just abrupt. But I want them to make sure everything's okay, right, before I go home. Like, I am I mean, I hate being in a hospital, but I want to make sure everything's okay. I don't want to go home and have this ticking time bomb and me not knowing about it because no one's checking my liver levels, you know, several times a day and, and doing constant blood pressures all day. And I don't want to be at home doing constant blood pressures all day, freaking out, thinking something's wrong and when I have to run to the hospital. I'm already here at the hospital. Let's do what we got to do. So I think they're on the same page with me, but 
they don't seem to be rushing me out um so but at the same time i don't want to stay here forever but then it then again you know my baby is still here he will be here unfortunately for a little while um they said likely three to four weeks but it could be a little longer um he wasn't due until december 28th and so he is I mean, he's really eight weeks early. He was on, he was going to be born two weeks early. So, but then he ended up being born eight weeks early, you know? So anyway, um, he was already going to be two weeks early because I was going to get induced at three, eight weeks. And that's fine because that's considered full term. But um, then he didn't get that, so. I feel bad for him when I see him in the incubator. Although he looks good, he looks good, but I know he's not supposed to be here. I know where he's supposed to be safe in mommy's belly and he's out here. Um, like what the hell? <laughs> so, um, but you know, he's doing well. So that's, that's good. And you know, everybody's excited about that. My daughter has no idea what's going on. Everybody keeps asking, is your daughter excited? But she's too. She has no idea what baby brother is or means, and she won't have an idea until he's home. And even then, she might be like, what is this thing? <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's where we're at. And just wanted to follow up and um, talk to you guys soon.